ओके जय हिंद एवरी वन माई सेल्फ अचिंत कुमार पांडे एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी एट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियर कॉलेज टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट एन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरियंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग दैट इज इनहेरिटेंस विच इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरियंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग ओके सो इनहेरिटेंस बेसिकली इज द आइडिया ऑफ रीयूजिलिटी हाउ वी कुड री यूज द थिंग्स विदाउट री राइटिंग राइट or sometime we are not known at that time and something new which is to could be predicted or which is could be there in uh, futures so we don't know right now right and that could be required uh, sometime after long time in a future so by creating our next class or sub class we could do um, that features also without um, rewriting that one okay so the objective is here we have uh, just explored the inheritance and uh, of object oriented programming so before inheritance let's see the what are the language then we uh, would emphasize particularly on inheritance okay so let's see the object oriented language basically uh, depending on the feature supported the program that support object oriented programming concept can be classified into two category one is object based programming language object based programming language uh, where, uh, and second one is object oriented programming language so object based programming like uh, we miss the feature inheritance and dynamic uh, binding okay so because object based programming does, uh, do not support inheritance and dynamic binding so this one is called object based language for example ada ada was the object based it was not object oriented programming language and second one is object oriented programming language like c++ and java and that support the feature of object based that is class object binding i mean uh, inheritance and dynamic binding so last two feature means inheritance and dynamic binding is absent in object based programming languages right okay so these all are the basically the main property of the object oriented programming that is the data abstraction which is called encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism other features could be we can say like class object um, these uh, others will be related to i mean somehow these could be related with these uh, abstraction inheritance or polymorphism okay so let's see what is inheritance so inheritance is basically it is the property or you can say characteristics by uh, uh, in which another class is called inheritance okay so inheritance is basically a feature or you can say a process in which new classes are created from the existing classes the new classes created is called derived class or you can sometimes called child class or sub classes and that sub class is going to you know um, represent or you can uh, characteristics and property of another class right okay means base class is going to inherit the property of sorry derived class or sub class or new class is going to inherit the property of base class or parent class okay so just going to inherit the property means a class Uh, will have only two things one is data and second one is the function so if sub class are base uh, are derived class are um, new class uh, sometimes called child class is going to inherit means they are going to inherit the property of uh, they are going <coughs> sorry to inherit the data and function of the base class ultimately that data or function which could be inherited by the sub class a derived class will become the member of this class right so there is no need to create the object of base class by just creating the object of derived class we can access the data of derived class as well as the base class right so when we say derived class in it the base class it means the derived class in it all the property of the base class without changing the property of base class and may add new feature to its own means child class could have feature of its own as well as it could inherit the property of all the parent class if it is right so the terminology here is sub class or super class sometime it is super class is called parent class sub class is new class or sometime it is called derived class so here yeah, we can see that a class vehicle is a parent class and the bus car and truck could be its sub class 
R, you can say. So, bus would have uh, exclusive property, right? Car would have some exclusive property, truck would have in, uh, exclusive property, but bus, car and truck would all have the property of class vehicles, right? So, in the class, we have seen these uh, functions uh, like here, okay? So, uh, here we uh, just so how we could implement these, right? Uh, so, uh, um, uh, now in the, in the even example, like here bus, car and truck, by just creating the object of even bus, car, or truck, anyone, we could access the member of class vehicle too. Like we can would access these functions, uh, fuel amount, capacity and apply breaks. So, implementing uh, inheritance in C++, what is the code of the, uh, how we could create the child class. So, by using this colon, I mean, just by writing class and identify the name of child class, colon, uh, access is specified, means public, private are protected. These all are some access is specified and base class name. Means, this class is going to inherit the property of this base class. So, this is the syntax. We simply use the colon symbol to uh, segregate or to distinguish with the base class, right? For example, here we have used class ABC column private X, Y, Z. So, meaning is that ABC is going to inherit the X, Y, Z. So, X, Y, Z become the parent and ABC become its child class. Similarly, like this. So, these all are the access specified private public protected. Now, there is a difference between if ABC is going to inherit privately of this X, Y, Z. So, we cannot inherit anyone, I mean, uh, neither private nor public data could become the member of ABC because these become the, okay. So, there are, uh, uh, I mean, particularly this distinction has been shown here in the next slides, okay. Even here, we have seen, we are just seeing that uh, not public, private are protected being specified. So, what it could take? So, if we do not specify any private, public are protected, by default it will take private, okay. So, private derivation by default. So, this is the syntax, okay, to create uh, subclass or derived class or child class, right. So, these all are the mode of inheritance, mode protected mode and private uh, mode, okay. So, <coughs> See what is the difference of in these mode, public mode. So, if we derive a subclass from a public base class, okay, then the public member of the base class will become public in the derived class and the protected member of the base class will become the protected in the derived class. For example, here, here, if ABC is going to derive or XYZ, this base class is going to derive publicly, so the public member of this particular XYZ class become the public of this, the protected member of this uh, public class will become the protected of ABC class. That is the meaning. Private member of any base class is not going to become the member of ABC. Only public or protected data or function of base class can be inherited, right? private data of any base class cannot be inherited by this class, right? Only public or protected could be inherited. So, this is particular difference. Then protected, if we derive a subclass from a protected base class, then both public and protected member of the base class will become protected, right? Like here, here. So, the public and protected of XYZ class will become the protected data of this ABC class. That is the meaning of this. Private mode, if you derive a subclass from a private class, then both public member and protected member of this base class will become the private in the derived class. For example, here, private XYZ means the data of this class, XYZ class, if, if there is a class XYZ, then the data of this x, y, z, even it is public or protected, they all would become the private data of this a, b, c class. That is the point. So, by this access specifier, we would have the rights how data of base class become either the private or public or um, 
protected in the derived class. Uh, just it has been shown by this one types are public public so same has been uh, just uh, interpreted in this tabular form now so we have many types of inheritance i mean how we could uh, how the property of base class can be you know um, inherited in the subclass or child class so there are different types of inheritance one is called single inheritance second is multi level third is multiple inheritance fourth is hierarchical and fifth is hybrid in inheritance. So, we will see with the example and even the syntax of that, right. Just the C++ how we program uh, using C++. Single inheritance means uh, a class which have just uh, one base class. This is called example of symbol inheritance. Like B is a derived class of A. So, this is called single inheritance. B is going to, this will be the subclass, this will be the uh, super class or parent class. So, this is the example. So, we simply write like here class B public A. So, B is a subclass, A is a parent or you can say super class, right. So, this is the syntax. This is some example being been shown a vehicle and car. So, car is a car is just going to inherit the property of vehicle, right. So, this is the example of uh, single inheritance and we have just created the object of car and by that we could access even the base class simple multiple inheritance means if a class has more than one base class then this is called multiple inheritance like here we are just seeing class a has more than one i mean b and c two parent class are two base class then this comes under the multiple inheritance for example here class a this is the subclass and pub, colon public B and public C means A has two uh, um, uh, parent class B and C. Multi-level entity, multi-level means, uh, uh, multi-level means uh, like, uh, uh, like grandparents, like parents, then child. So, child inherits the property of parent, parent inherits the property of grandparent, ultimately child inherits the property of parent as well as the grandparents. So, here B is a subclass or child class of class C and again we could create the child of this B class and this even uh, we can further create the subclass or child class of class A like class X or something like this. So, this is called multi-level, more than one level, right. So, in this type of inheritance, a derived class is created from another derived class, right. So, this is uh, this is a derived class of this one, again further uh, it, this A could be derived from this derived class, right. So, this is the example like class C, class B public C means B is going to inherit the C, similarly class C is going to inherit the A. So, this could be seen just like a parent and child relation. Next is hierarchical. Hierarchical inheritance, it could be uh, seen just like as a tree data structure, hierarchy, okay, like uh, just like tree structure, just like G has two child B and E, means B is going to inherit the property of G, E is going to inherit the property of uh, G, similarly A is going to inherit the property of B and of course it is going to inherit the property of G. So, there is a multi-level too, right. So, this hierarchical means we can identify it as just like as a tree structure. So, hierarchical inheritance could be identified just like as a tree data structure. Here we could see class A, class B public A, B is going to inherit A, similarly class C, C is going to inherit also A, means B and C both inherit the property of A, means A would have two child B and C, similarly class D is going to inherit the property of uh, a means B, C, D, they are, would be the child, right. Then is hybrid in it. Hybrid are you can say more than in a, in a scenario, in an example, if it exhibit more than one, you know, types of inheritance, this then this comes under the hybrid inheritance. So, hybrid inheritance is implemented by combining more than one type of inheritance. For example, combining hierarchical inheritance, hierarchical and multiple inheritance. See here, like uh, uh, 
here class class e has two base class right f and g so this become the multiple as similarly uh, class f is further divided into b and e and by b has been further divided into a and c so here there is a hierarchical as well as uh, multiple so if a class a scenario exit more than two types of finite eh, then this comes under the take uh, property of our uh, base class 2 right so inheritance is basically the concept or idea of reusability see the same being used in the software development process right so we, we use by using the concept of inheritance so this is all about uh, the inheritance right okay thank you everyone